Hello everyone, welcome to Parametric Planet and welcome to Revit Bomb Workflow. Uh, in the last video, we have created the levels and the grid lines and today I will show you how we can create floors at uh, each uh, grid level, so at each elevation. Uh, let me show you first the, the levels uh, we have created. If we go to the 3D view and then these are the levels and now we will create the floors at each level. To do that, uh, let's create, uh, let's first check what do we need to create a floor in Revit model. Uh, we will go to the create an object. And if we go to, if we expand this one, select an item. And one thing I would like to uh, inform you here, all the types which are related to structure namespace or the environment namespace, these elements uh, cannot be push to Revit model or will not be uh, incorporated by the bomb. Only uh, when you are dealing with the um, structure analysis, for instance, uh, set E tabs, you can use this uh, structure uh, option or this namespace. But for Revit, it's physical. So all the elements which are available in physical namespace can be pushed uh, to Revit model. So now we want to create a floor. So we will go to elements and we will check. So here is a floor. So we have multiple options here. Uh, it consider openings, openings, internal edges. So we will go for uh, a simple one, which is construction and I curve edges. So it needs the, the edges. It could be a polyline, line, a boundary curve, etc. Uh, so we want to create the floor. So the simplest way is to create a rectangle. So if I just say a rectangle. And it means X, Y um, dimensions. So it's basically centered at the origin. So I will do the same. So in this case, I will create the domain. Uh, so we construct domain. So that uh, my rectangle is uh, centered around the origin. X, Y, uh, let's create a slider and change it to 20. Um, I have to set this one. Stars domain and the ends domain. So now it will be from plus five minus five plus five minus five. Now we can see the rectangle. Let's connect this one uh, with the edges. And it also needs the, the construction. Let's go to the construction. So physical construction, it needs the name. Name is basically the, the family or the family type name. And if we go to Revit and if we check uh, our floor category, so we have different types here. Let's choose this generic one. I will copy this name. And I will paste it here. So now we have uh, this floor. In order to push this one to rivet, uh, we have to create a push component, which is right here in the adopters tab. Push. It needs adopter objects and Boolean toggle. Uh, one thing I would like to tell you, it's um, another uh, plugin, which is telepathy. Uh, with the help of this one, you can um, access your, if you have connected some adopter, if you have, you have connected some, some objects, you can access those using a key uh, with this receiver, remote receiver component, anywhere in your uh, canvas. For instance, if uh, I have created this uh, sender, and I give name instead of remote sender to uh, Revit adopter. 
So when I choose this one, go to the keys and click on Revit Adopter, it will automatically connect with this component. So it means I don't have to go back here and drag a wire and connect there. I can simply just use this um, uh, receiver and it will automatically connect with the Revit Adopter. Now it's time to push our objects. The true. So we have created a floor in Revit model. So now we have only created uh, one floor because we haven't um, inserted the series of floors which, which we have created. So now what we can do, we can create this uh, vector in Z direction because we want to move our floor in Z direction or copy our floor. So I will use this component move. We have this geometry, we have this motion, and this is the series. So we can see we have copied those floors at uh, this, this elevation 5, then 25. Now I will connect this geometry with the edges. Let me see, no, we haven't pushed any. So now I will push this one. Yes, now we can see that the different floors at each elevation and the properties uh, generic 300. So if I want to assign another family type, I will just delete this one and let's choose this concrete domestic. Let's go back. If it falls and I will create another panel. Connect this one here. So we have a more thicker slab now. So that's the way uh, you can create your floors very easily uh, in the bit model using BOM. Let's uh, just now uh, create the columns at the corner points of the floor slabs, starting from this point till the end of this floor. To do that, um, I have created this uh, script. What I'm doing here, I'm actually exploding these, if I show you, I'm exploding these boundary elements so that I have the edges and the vertices. And after that, I'm just evaluating this curve just to get the points along the, along these uh, edges. And then I have just uh, copied this point in Z direction and with these points and the move points, I have created the lines. And from that, those lines, uh, I have created this BOM object to create the column. So if you just go to the BOM, uh, create object, right click, and again, go to the physical elements and to column. Uh, now you have the options. So I have choose the simple one uh, to create the column from the lines. That's the one. You can also choose the points as I have already created the line. So it's better to choose the, the lines. And then uh, when you go to this uh, category of, uh, I think it should be in structure and column. It's not here, uh, structural columns, yeah. And then you have this uh, rectangular columns and the universal. So I have chosen this uh, 600 by 750, this one, and connected to this column component. And now I will push this one to rivet model. Now we can see these columns uh, has been created in rivet. So let's suppose if I want to change the, the location of these columns. So let me delete everything. Go back, uh, make it false. Let's send this floors again. And now let's just change the position of the columns. Now send it to Revit. So it's been.
weird, but for the sake of this example, it's fine. So that's how you can parametrically control the position of your columns, your slabs. Now I would like to show you how we can delete these columns without deleting them from the Revit. For instance, uh, previously we used to select these columns manually and then hit the delete button. But this time I will show you how we can control them from um, Grasshopper using BOM. To do that, uh, we have to create this uh, component remove. I have uh, already created this script, but I will explain you. You need this component remove it uh, again need the request. So to create the request, uh, you can just simply go to object and you have to create the filter. So it's simple. Uh, you can go to data request and filter request and you can choose different options. For columns, I have just um, chosen the simple one, filter type request, so that I can delete all the columns. But you can also specify the, the levels, uh, from which level you want to remove. Uh, I will show you that one after this one. So uh, now let's just delete all the columns from our model. So I will uh, connect this request with this remove component. The rest is same. It needs an adopter uh, request and this pull and toggle. And if we hit the true button, all the columns are gone. Now what uh, we can do, we can make it false. And I will again change the uh, location of my columns. Let's delete it again. So that's easy. Again, to zero zero. True. Now we have again columns at the desired location. Now let's just uh, delete our floors. So this time I will not delete all the floors. I will delete uh, this third floor from a model. So to do that, it's simple. I will just create a request. Uh, and I will create a type, which means it will um, check for the floors in my model. And then uh, if I directly connect this one with this remove component, it will remove all the floors. So I want to specify I need only a floor at the third level should be removed. For that, I will create another request, uh, which is filtered by parameter. And if uh, you go to create object and then go to adopters and rivet adopter you will find these requests so you can also choose this filter types also i mean filter by type name when you have families if you want to uh, remove certain family you can uh, use uh, filter by family type filter by family type and filter by family name so here we have uh, this one filter by parameter text. So this one I have selected. So it needs a parameter name. So parameter name is level. And further, um, I choose uh, the value. So in this one, the value is the name of the level. So this list item, it collects all the lists from this format component, which we have created. And then I choose this index two, it starts from zero. So index two means it's floor three. And now when I combine these two requests at the end, it will um, extract only one floor. So when I combine this, I connect this one here and make it true, it will remove the third floor from my model. So if I want to remove another floor, I can just, change the number and press true and it will remove another flow. So that's how uh, you can remove your flows using remove component and creating a uh, filter request. So you can create different type of filter requests. So in my opinion, it's a very useful tool, this remove uh, component. 
because sometimes uh, you don't want to delete all the elements. You just need to delete certain element in your model. So you can just create a filter with uh, multiple requests. And then at the end, you combine those requests to get that element and just uh, connect with the remove. Or if you want to change the properties uh, and if you want to extract the properties of a specific element. So it will always help you this uh, filter request. So yeah, that's all for this video. And I hope uh, you like this one. And if you have some questions or some confusion, just write in the comment and I will try to answer those comments or those queries. Thank you very much for your attention and see you next time. Bye-bye.